Hi, I'm in New York City, and 3,000 miles away in France is my friend Chantal. Bonjour, Tada. Hi, Chantal. Language, what is it? What does it mean to communicate? Are these kids communicating? What is this man trying to say? Have you ever tried whistling with your fingers? Can you imagine using whistling as a language? Do you know what these words mean? Hey, Eddie, two on a raft, wreck them. What is she talking about? Well, it's all coming up next in English and French on... Three, two, one. Contact is the secret, is the moment When everything happens, contact is the answer, is the reason That everything happens, contact Let's make contact You're gonna love this place. Is the food good? The people are great. How's the food? Wait till you meet Maxine, the waitress. She's an old friend. Okay, but how is the food? Hey, Eddie, how you doing? Hi, Maxine. Hi, oh, hi, David. I'll be right with you. It's really a nice place. Yeah, it's the best. I come here all the time. Really? Mm -hmm. But how? Is the food. Hi, fellas. Hi. Hi, Maxine. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to my friend David from France. Hi. Hi. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Don't tell me. Let me guess. You'll have your usual, right? Right. Hey, Eddie. Two on a raft. Wreck them. Coming up. And one cow juice. Cow juice? Oh, cow juice. It means milk. Cow juice. What'll it no. be, David? Um, I will have a piece of apple pie and a tea, please. Boiled leaves and Adam and Eve with a lid on. I'll be right back. I gotta go do the splits for that other table. She's a dancer? No, to the splits. It means make banana splits. I don't know. I thought I understood English, but I didn't understand a word she said. <laughs> it's just a special language that they use here. For instance, I always order the same thing. Two scrambled eggs on toast. Two on a raft. Right. Wreck them. Scramble. Cow juice. Is milk. Right. And you had tea. Uh, void leaves. Right. And Adam and Eve with the lid on is... Apple pie. Oh, great. I understand now. But there's one thing I don't quite understand. Why didn't she just say two scrambled eggs on toast, one milk, one tea, and one apple pie? I don't know. We'll have to ask her. We will. Signs are an international language. No matter where you are, you can understand them. See how many of these signs you can understand. Signs say it all. This is the United States. The next film takes place here, in France.
If that man hadn't whistled, I probably would never have realized Chantal was trying to call me. There was something about the whistle that got my attention. It wasn't an ordinary whistle. What a loud whistle! I could hear it all the way up there! I know. Mary Lopez, this is Joseph. Bonjour, oh, Marie. Bonjour, Joseph. She, elle a dit que vous avez sifflé vraiment très très fort. Et quand vous avez sifflé, moi j'ai eu l'impression que vous parliez, que vous disiez quelque chose. C'est vrai? Ah oui, c'est vrai, c'est vrai. Et qu'est-ce que vous disiez? Ah, je disais, mademoiselle descend ici. Ah! You know, when he whistled, it was a language. He was saying something to you. The whistling is a language? Yes. That's incredible. Well, what was he saying? He was saying for you to come down here. That's amazing. It really is. So it was a sentence that he, he was yes. whistling. Yes. Well, could he do it again? Est-ce que vous pourriez nous refaire le sifflement que vous nous avez fait? Oui. Incredibly oh. loud. Can he say anything else? I don't know. Est-ce que vous pouvez dire autre chose, par exemple, il fait froid, il y a de la neige? Oui, je peux dire, oui. Oui? What did he say that time? He said that it was cold and it was snowing. You're kidding. <laughs> That's amazing. C'est incroyable. Et est-ce qu'il y a d'autres personnes qui sifflent dans le village ou il n'y a que vous? Ah non, il n'y a que ma soeur. Ah, il y a votre soeur? Oui. On peut aller la voir? Ah oui, on peut y aller. What? We're gonna go see her, his sister. She whistles too. You're kidding. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to meet her. Oui, on y va? Oui, oui. Okay, let's go. Joseph and his sister Annette live in the Pyrenees Mountains. Years ago, the sheep herders of their village discovered that from mountain to mountain, whistling carried farther than shouting, so they developed a special language of whistles. Chantal and I were interested in learning how they used their language. On l'utilisait pour quoi le sifflement? Uh, pour s'appeler, pour demander un service, quelque chose. Mm. They used it, you know, to call each other. Pour to aller ask dans quelque other. part ou si on avait un malheur n'importe où. On sifflait pour mm. se... If something happened to someone, they could tell the other person by whistling. Et si, par exemple, vous vouliez dire à quelqu'un que sa brebis s'était égarée ou les bergers... Oui. On le disait aussi. Vous pouviez le dire. They could oui. tell, like the shepherds could tell each other if their sheep were going off too far. Ah, oh, so they could help oui. each other out that way. Yes. It, um, but is it better than yelling? Is it better... C'est mieux que de, que de crier, parce qu'on qu peut de dire crier, des choses. Oui, oui. On entendait davantage de, de siffler. You hear it better. Maybe Joseph can, can um, say that for us about the shepherds. Yeah, like if the sheep she... is going too far. Yeah, could he, you, know, you could ask him to tell us that. Okay. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous faire le, le sifflet que vous feriez si vous vouliez dire à un autre berger que sa brebis était allée trop loin? Oui. Here's Joseph whistling different things. If you don't believe Joseph is really saying anything with his whistling, that's exactly what the group of scientists who studied this language tried to find out. That's Joseph and a neighbor 30 years ago. They were part of a scientific experiment to find out if their whistling was really a language. First, his neighbor was asked to repeat single syllables into a microphone. While in another room, Joseph heard the whistles over a speaker and was able to identify most of the syllables. 
In a second experiment, they were allowed to whistle whole sentences. Just by listening to each other over a speaker, they were able to carry on a conversation. The scientists even took x-rays to see how they produced the whistles. Voice grams were taken. Here's the way the word Federico looks when it is spoken. Federico. Here's how it looks when it's whistled. And here's how it sounds. For a long time, whistling was a common language among the sheep herders of these mountains. Through whistling, they were able to communicate many ideas. Annette. She's saying that she can whistle, but in a different dialect. Do you think they could show us how to whistle? I'd love to learn. Me too. Vous pouvez nous apprendre à siffler? Oui. Comment on fait? On est dans la bouche, puis on souffle fort. Ah oui? On les met comment On les met sur la langue Sur la langue. On top of the tongue. Right? On top of the tongue, tongue yeah. This is hard. I can't do it. I The shepherds of the Pyrenees not only learned to maintain contact in the mountains by whistling, they created a special language to deal with their particular needs. It's a language that's not used anymore because they now have radios and walkie-talkies and they don't have to whistle. When Joseph and his sister Annette die, the language will probably die with them. Thank you. You guys want anything else? Actually, we have a question. Shoot. We would like to know, uh, why do you use those special names for all the food? What special names? Hold on a second. Eddie, bowl of bird seed drown. Like that, bird seed drown. What does that mean? A bowl of cereal with milk. Why don't you just say that? I don't know. Well, everybody works here knows what I mean. It's kind of fun. Uh, everybody here knows cow juice means milk. It's like English or French. It's your own language. Right. And sometimes it helps when we have to signal each other. Like, uh, 86 means that we're out of something, and 95 means that a customer's leaving without paying. And when you have to yell in front of everybody, it helps to have secret code. It's a good system. Oh, and sometimes it saves time. Like, CJ White means cream cheese and jelly on white bread. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Monique, she's from Paris. Oh, hi. hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> so I think I want a tuna fish salad on wheat toast with lettuce and tomato. Hey, Eddie, one radio through the garden. Wait on. What did she say? Radio. Yeah, tuna on toast. See, it used to be tuna down, but that sounded like turn it down like a radio. So now a tuna fish salad sandwich is called a radio. What is she talking about? I'll be right back. Tuna fish is like a radio, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I 
mais non, ça veut bien dire c'est pas très visible en français. En anglais, il met les notes dans les deux sonnets, tu vois. C'est débile. Sometimes something you do when you're a kid can change the whole way you look at things. Linus Pauling is a chemist. He's the only person ever to win two Nobel Prizes. Eighty years ago, when I was five years old, I received my first lesson in science. I was living in a small town in eastern Oregon full of cowboys. I had someone had given me a knife, and I was downtown by Main Street, which was a muddy street, not paved, uh, trying to sharpen a pencil, but not succeeding. A cowboy said, you're not doing it right. You must think about it. First, hold the knife firmly, and then select the angle at which you want to make the cuts, and keep to that angle. And make one cut, rotate the pencil, make another cut, and you'll succeed. That was my first lesson in science, in rational thinking. I hope that all of you will study science and mathematics and be able to appreciate the wonders of this modern world. traveling through Wyoming with Kevin Locke of the Sioux Nation. Well, David and Mary, welcome to Wyoming. Thank you. So beautiful. Yeah, this area of Wyoming is really beautiful. We're on the Wind River Reservation, as you know, the homeland of the Shoshone and Arapaho tribes. At one time, there were hundreds of languages spoken in North America among the many people, but most of them shared a common language of hand signals. Kevin is an expert on that language. Good morning to all of you. As a way of demonstrating sign language, I'd like to share with you a blessing, a very old Indian blessing, and it goes like this. Whose voice I hear in the wind, and whose breath gives life to all the world. Hear me. I'm small and weak. One of your many children am I. Let me walk in beauty and make my eyes ever behold the red and purple sunset. Make my hands respect the things you have made and my ears sharp to hear your voice. Make me wise that I may know the things you have taught my people. Let me learn the many lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. I seek strength, not to be greater than my brother, but to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me always ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eyes, so that when life fades as the fading sunset, my spirit may come to you without shame. Okay, 
Now, many of you have never really probably stopped to, talk, stopped to think that we all use science. We all use our hands to talk on a daily basis. And I bet if we had time, we could probably come up with maybe at least 100 or maybe 200 signs that you all use. Let's say you're in the library. And the librarian, of course, wants to make sure that everybody is quiet so the people who are studying are not disturbed. OK, let's say that some students are talking loudly and the librarian wants them to be quiet. How would she show, tell them to be quiet without saying one word? Good. OK, now let's imagine that the teacher in a, in a classroom situation that has asked you a question, has singled you out for a question, but you don't know the answer to that question. How would you tell the teacher that you don't know? How would you say that? Right. Kevin, that's, that's really amazing because all these different signs are universal. And even French people would understand them. Right. Did all the Indian people use the same exact sign language? All the people of the plains and prairie region used a very similar or, or almost the exact same gestures to communicate the same ideas and concepts. Well, how is that possible since their spoken languages were so different? All the signs and gestures used in, in sign language are taken from, uh, from ob observing nature, observing the, the uh, different natural phenomenon, different natural occurrences, and translating those into signals with the hands. So since the sign language developed from a common experience that they all shared, they could all develop signals and gestures that they could all understand, despite the fact that they spoke different languages. Right. Just to show you, demonstrate how different these different uh, Indian languages, verbal languages, are from each other, I'm going to give you a greeting in my language, which is the Lakota, or Sioux language. If we see a friend or somebody, we would say, How donik tu kahe? Which means, hello, how are you? Now I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Star, the Shoshone tribe, to give us a greeting in his language. And also we have a gentleman from the Arapaho tribe, Mr. Brown. If you could give us a greeting in the Arapaho language. Okay, so we just heard three different greetings in three very different languages. And I know for my part, I couldn't understand the greetings at which they gave us. Now, just imagine if we didn't have English as a way of all speaking with one another, and we were back in a time maybe 100, 200 years ago, and we met each other, and the only way we could talk is to use our hands. Now, these gentlemen will give us a demonstration of sign language. Kevin, what did they say? They greeted each other. They greeted each other. They asked each other how they were doing. It's been a long time since they saw each other. And they also indicated that it's about time to eat. It's about the time of day that we usually get hungry. So now we've seen a demonstration of a sign language. And I'd like to do an activity with you. I think it'll be fun. I'm going to start this story. I'm going to say that I was sleeping. OK, let's all try this. Let's say, I am sleeping. I am sleeping. sleeping. Okay, the things that are going to wake us up is the sun, the sun is, rising, is rising, the day breaking, and I am hearing the, the sound of birds. So I got up. Okay, good. So we're up. Now we can do anything that we want to do from here. Let's go powwow. You want to go to the powwow? Yeah. Okay, let's say that too. Let's make the sign for us, all of us. Okay, and the sign for now again. Let's make a sign for dancing. A lot of people dancing. Then the sign for go. go. Take it away. A powwow is a big celebration where people from many different tribes meet. Each tribe has its own way of dressing in these ceremonies. The different styles are symbols, which communicate different ideas. Even the dances have their own meanings. Look, there's so 
raining. It can get pretty loud at a powwow, and at a time like this, sign language still comes in handy. Feels like we're standing in a classroom, except our classroom is in a hoop, in a circle. And you see all the people, all the elders, middle-aged people, and the children. So in these diners, they speak a special language with codes and signals that everyone knows. What did you say? OK, yeah. I got one. You ready? Gobble up the river. Oh, David. Uh. <laughs> Come on, guess. Gobble, mm. gobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Turkey. Right. Up the river, water, turkey, stew. Ah, you're very close. Yeah. I know. It's soup. Gobble up the river is turkey soup. Oh, That's it. All right. We got to get going. Talk. See you later. Okay. Bye. 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 Take Bye. Care. Bye. Bye. Mmm, I'm still hungry. Yeah. I think I will get another hot dog. Okay, Definitely. let me order for you. Okay. Hey, Maxine, one dog, walk it! Coming right up! <laughs> <laughs> so, great place, huh? Great people. That's your hot dog. Really great people. Do you want a bite? Are you kidding? The food in that place is terrible. <laughs> Three Two One Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop and FR3.